If you're wondering, yes, this video is being re-uploaded because of YouTube's amazing guidelines. We, we just love working with them so much. The old video got age-restricted for, for something. We never know what it is. But for those of you who've already watched this video, make sure to help us out and watch the whole video one more time. Daddy! The UFC might not be paying their fighters really well, but they sure know how to run a fighting business. I can't wait, man. March 5th is getting closer. So is this knee to your temple. This just doesn't get much bigger. The third pay-per-view event of the year in UFC 272 goes down March 5th. And the date couldn't be more fitting. 305, the area code of Miami. And it happens to have two of Miami's own headlining the event as Colby Covington takes on Jorge Masvidal in a welterweight headline. I know they used to be roommates. They trained every day. They coached each other. From a story standpoint, we love guys who used to be boys and now they're enemies. While it will take place in Las Vegas, the occasion is still massive as this is a fight just about everyone has wanted to see for a while now. To further highlight just how huge this fight is, let me remind you that there is no title at stake. In fact, this is the first non-title main event not featuring Conor McGregor or Nate Diaz since Anderson Silva fought Nate Diaz all the way back in January 2015. That is why, despite there being some fun fights on this card like Edson Barbosa versus Bryce Mitchell or Kevin Holland versus Alex Oliveira, we'll solely take a look at the main event because quite frankly, it deserves all our attention. Welcome to the fighting business. Come along as we take a deeper dive into the UFC 272 grudge match between Covington and Masvidal, a fight that has been in the making for over two years. For this story, we need to start at the beginning. If you didn't know by now, Covington and Masvidal were, as the narrative goes, former best friends. They trained at American Top Team in room together. You could see how close they were in Masvidal's Tale from the Grind series, which looking back today, is pretty crazy to see. Covington is all humble and polite. He's basically the quiet one, while Masvidal is the partying bad boy who was certainly more popular at the time, given that he was already in the UFC. As the series goes, Covington prepping for his UFC debut in 2014 is documented, and of course, he would go on to have a very successful first few fights in the UFC. As the years went by, we would see the pair cornering each other and just displaying a real friendship and brotherhood. I'll be cheering for him, or if it's me getting the next title shot, he'll be courtside cheering for me, you know, so it's no big deal. We, we planned this out a long time ago. It doesn't, uh, it's not gonna affect our friendship, you know? We're gonna still be boys no matter what has to happen, so it's, it's all great. But... While Covington started getting more confident and talkative, he and Masvidal started talking about taking over the welterweight division. They labeled it the Easy Money Tour and said it was two against the world. Yeah, man. Can't say nothing about enough about American Top Team. Mike Brown, my head coach, my best friend Jorge Masvidal. Team Easy Money Tour taking over the welterweight division. Get the world, baby. That's two against the world. But I want you to go to the year 2017 in particular. Masvidal seemed ready to take the next step into title contention. He started the year with a super impressive TKO win over the red hot Donald Cerrone. He was then matched up with the streaking Damian Maya. Whoever won that fight would essentially get the next title shot. It was a back and forth fight, but Masvidal would eventually lose a very close split decision. He was still in the title mix though, and would later in the year be matched up with former title challenger Steven Thompson. However, Game Bread was simply outclassed on the feet and would lose a comfortable decision. This will be the last we saw of Masvidal, at least in an octagon for just about over a year. During this time, Covington was climbing up the ranks. Following his win over Brian Barbarena, Chaos was on a 3-fight winning streak and was 6-1 in the UFC overall. He was also upping his social media game by taking shots at Rafael dos Santos, just being brash in general. If you were somewhat of a hardcore fan at the time, you probably started getting aware of Covington right before his fight with Don Hyun Kim in June 2017. Covington started playing to the crowd after he dominated Kim over 3 rounds and just seemed to be embracing the heel role. really began Covington's notoriety was his next fight which happened to be against Maya in September 2017. It was two months after Maya had suffered defeat in his title fight with then champion Tyron Woodley. Covington wrapped up the trash talk and after winning a comfortable decision, said something the Brazil crowd would never ever forget. If nobody knew who Covington was, they did now. 
He later revealed he decided to turn things up a notch, as he was told by the UFC that he would get cut regardless of his winning streak, because he was just not exciting. He's like, they were going to cut him. They were going to cut him. They had told him that his style wasn't fan-friendly. And so he beats Damian Mai in Brazil and calls him a bunch of filthy animals. Everybody goes crazy. None of the fans care about your fighting style. No one cares about your personality. So I knew I had to make a change. I had to do something that was going to get the fans involved, get make it a circus, you know, because this is the circus business, you know. So I knew I had to make a change, and I had to do something drastic that was going to get the fans and everybody hyped up. And that's what I did. Whether you hate me or love me, you're going to tune in to watch me. So in essence, this was the birth of the Covington character. People were not only talking about Covington, but he had now earned an interim welterweight title shot against Rafael dos Santos in June 2018. It was a close fight, but Covington did enough to come out on top. And who was in his corner celebrating his win? None other than Mastal. This is important now, because it will be the last time we saw the pair together. Covington was set for a title shot against former training partner Tyron Woodley. Real world championship. If Tyron Woodley has something to say about it, he can come see me. He needs to stop acting like a hanging out in Hollywood. But would get skipped over by Kamara Usman after requiring surgery on his nose. But I couldn't fight because they offered me the fight on six weeks and I was already getting nose surgery. I couldn't breathe out of my nose. I had mucus, blood drained down my nose, into my lungs. Usman would become the new champion and Covington's money fight with Woodley vanished in an instant. Covington was not pleased and would sit on the sidelines for a while. It was at this time when Masdal returned from his hiatus and came back as a new fighter. He said he went away. He did this reality show yeah, in so South America. Yeah, I watched it, but he said he went away and had time yeah. to himself. Smart well, man. Yeah, well what happened was he was on this reality show and he didn't like it at all and, and then it forced him to think about where he's at, where he could be. And he was thinking like, why? You know, why did it go that way instead of the other way? Like, why did I lose that fight instead of win it? Because there was a lot of them that are really close. Yeah. And he was thinking, I've well, maybe I could just have done a little bit more and won that fight. And then he said, why am I thinking like a fucking peasant? He goes, why did not I just knock that motherfucker that. out? He took on Darren Till at UFC London. He would brutally knock the Liverpool native out. And it was here that Mazdal started his rise to superstardom. He would go on to deliver the infamous knee that nobody would ever forget as he ended Ben Askren faster than people had time to sit in their seats. He then got called out by Nate Diaz as the pair would later go on to headline Madison Square Garden for the BMF title in what was Masvidal's first huge money fight. As all this was happening, we barely saw Covington and Masvidal together. Masvidal was now a star and entering title contention, while Covington was still yet to receive his shot at Usman. Not everyone sensed it, but there seemed to be some tension between the pair of best friends. They even hinted at fighting each other, but not in a heated way. But we know that it's kind of an interesting situation because your friend, Colby Covington, and teammate, he wants the shot as well. How is this going to work out between you and Colby? I got, man, I, over everything, over friendships, anything is my kids. You know, and obviously fighting for that belt is my kid's future. It doesn't sound too nice, but if my mom had the belt, she better give it up because my kids got to eat, you know, so... You know, if, I, if I'm going to fight my mom, imagine a good friend, you know? And it's no disrespect to Kobe, and I think he's done great things in the sport, and he's, he's still young, so he's going to do many great things. And then it happened. The first real shots were fired in September 2019. Covington took aim at Masvidal right before the BMF title was announced. The war of wars had officially begun. Was it an act? Many people felt so. But the more the two went at each other, the more it seemed the friendship had genuinely come to an end. Masvidal later claimed he was helping Covington out by letting him crash at his place as he was trying to make it as an MMA fighter. It is what it is, man. All these words, you know, they do have consequences to me because this guy used to sleep on my couch. He used to eat off me because I wasn't the one with the sponsors. He was just still relatively an amateur and I was helping this guy out. So it... He also claimed his beef with Covington started after the latter didn't pay his coach after his win over the Sanchos. He ripped off my coach. It was his coach. We were with him till his title fight. After he won the title, he owed him a certain amount of money didn't pay him I said if you don't pay him I'm gonna F you up my coach got in between it doesn't have to be like this let it slide blah 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 since then I ain't talked to the dude remember how I mentioned we barely saw Covington and Masvidal together after that fight Covington meanwhile claims Masvidal got jealous of his success he also claims the reason the fight took so long to make is because Masvidal was scared of losing the evidence the wrestling footage from back in the day which clearly shows Covington having the upper hand. I reckon that day I was getting every single take that hand I skipped once and held up and written out every round. Remember the 10-minute write out? I never coming up to you after the 10-minute write out. You got out once in that 10-minute write out. No, you didn't get out once in the 10 Yes, I did. It's a write-out. That means you didn't get out. Whatever the real story is, 
These two do not like each other, and their beef is almost certainly not scripted like many are saying. We, we cut off the communication a long time ago, you know, when, when he started to get jealous and envious of my rise and success up to the top, you know, he, he wanted to backstab me like the bum he is, you know, like he does to everybody. He likes to use people. I mean, Covington is not even with American top team anymore. He got kicked out because he kept getting into altercation with Masvidal. It's more like loyalty to me. Like, you, you can't do somebody wrong that, that I love, you know. You, it's just not going to happen. I, I got kicked out of the gym for trying to assault him one time. And then I used to go to the spots that he used to freak in a lot and got the police called on me and things like that, you know. So um, I know a lot of people think, like, man, you're an idiot. You're a professional fighter. Why would you do that? Because I feel like And Jorge was not the only ATT fighter who had a problem with Covington. Just ask Dustin Poirier or Joanna Jan Jacek. If I fight Cobra, we're both going to jail. I'm going to jail. I'm not going to fight him in the octagon. He's not making money off of, my, off of my career and what I've done. This is something different, you know. Uh, I'm, you, you will never see me fight Kobe Covington in the UFC. Covington, what is your message to Kobe right now? There's a he's lot a prick. He's a I prick. don't care about this guy. What, you know? what, what, he what? doesn't know how to act, you know. He's not a real man. He doesn't know how to say hello, good morning, hi, so sorry to a woman. So. And let's not forget how Covington is making things personal by bringing Masvidal's ex-wife into the picture. Nobody is going that far to sell a fake rivalry. I don't know about you but I'd be very surprised if these two even shook hands or embraced each other after the fight. Which leads us to now, after almost two years in the making and everything that has happened since, mainly with Kamara Usman, we finally get to see them collide. Two former roommates, former training partners, former best friends, now heated rivals who can't be in the same room together. Luckily for us, we get to see them locked up in a cage where they get to settle their differences once and for all. It was two against the world at one point, now the two will go against each other, and violence is guaranteed. We're all set for a memorable night at UFC 272. And now that you have dived deep enough into the main event, let me know how you see the fight going down in the comments. Will we see another baptism? Or will Covington dominate Masvidal like he has with about every opponent not named Kamara Usman? We'll find out in a few weeks. Don't forget to leave a like on your way out and a big thank you for allowing me a couple minutes of your day. But for now, I gotta bounce. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.